The third national park in the popular Utah Five, consisting of Arches and Bryce Canyon, which we already covered, Canyonlands, which is today's park, Capitol Reef, Next Times Park, and Zion National Park, Canyonlands is located close to Moab, Utah, and provides a variety of desert features common throughout all Utah parks. Like Bryce Canyon, Native Americans found the Canyonlands area great for hunting and gathering, and were the first in the area around 10,000 years ago. About 2,000 years ago, the Pueblo and Fremont Native Americans inhabited the area, in what is now nearby Massa Verde National Park. Overcrowding, however, forced the peoples to migrate to the northwest and settle in the area called the Needles, named for a group of sandstone spires in the area. Most of the groups remained in the area until about 1300 CE, when changing climates led the Native Americans to move to the south. However, some tribes still remain in the area today, such as the Navajo and the Utes. The first European explorers to arrive in the Canyonlands area were Spanish priests in the 1770s looking for a route from Santa Fe in New Mexico to the many missions along the California coast. The earliest priests failed to successfully find a way to the coast, but in the early 1800s a path was finally made. Later in the 19th century, exploration of the two rivers in Canyonlands, the Colorado and the Green, led to Major John Wesley Powell mapping and recording the history of the rivers on his trip from Wyoming to the Grand Canyon in 1869. Most of the early permanent settlements in the Canyonlands area were founded by a religious group called the Mormons, who were seeking religious freedom and headed west to the unsettled by Europeans Utah territory. By the 1880s, towns such as Moab, Bluff, and Monticello had sprung up across eastern Utah. Canyonlands' path to becoming a national park lied in the hands of a surprising group, miners. After World War II, the arms race started by the Cold War required lots of uranium, and Utah's so-called canyon country was packed with it. To make the area more accessible to the miners, roads were quickly built across eastern Utah, including roads through what would become Canyonlands and Arches National Park. Though little uranium was actually found in the present-day borders of the national park, miners were in awe of what they saw at Canyonlands and started promoting tourism in the area. By 1960, tourism was so popular that the superintendent of what was then Arches National Monument started advocating for a national park at Canyonlands. This movement only grew when Secretary of the Interior, Stuart Udall, saw the park for himself in 1961, and in 1964, Lyndon B. Johnson created Canyonlands National Park. Canyonlands has a lot to offer, but perhaps the best way to get a good feel for what the park is like is to take the Island in the Sky Road, which runs through the center of the park. The road begins at the Island in the Sky Visitor Center, which gives descriptions on the rock formations in the area, as well as the history of the native peoples. Continuing down the road, Mesa Arch is a great feature that is just a short hike off the road. The arch spans almost half a mile in length, providing a breathtaking sight. At the end of the road is the Grand Viewpoint, which is preceded by a one mile hike to the lookout area, which offers a view of the whole park in all its glory. Canyonlands National Park is one of America's most beautiful places and is a wonderful area to visit.